In its final months, President Joe Biden's administration has decided to allow U.S. defense contractors to work in Ukraine to service and repair weapons provided by the Pentagon, U.S. officials told Reuters. It is noted that this is a significant change in policy aimed at helping Kyiv in the fight against Russia. A U.S. official, speaking on condition of anonymity, said the contractors would be few in number and would be located far from the front lines and would not engage in combat. They will help ensure that U.S. provided equipment can be quickly repaired if damaged and maintained as needed, the official said. Restrictions in the past have sometimes slowed repairs and have become increasingly difficult as the United States has supplied Kyiv with more sophisticated systems such as F-16 fighter jets and Patriot air defense systems, officials say. CNN adds that the weapon systems that will be serviced by U.S. contractors include F-16 fighter jets and Patriot air defense systems. Much of the equipment is not being used by Ukraine because it is damaged, a second U.S. official said. Journalists note. The move is the latest easing of restrictions by the Biden administration, which has sought to help Ukraine defend itself from Moscow's invasion 2.5 years ago without directly engaging in conflict with nuclear-armed Russia. A third U.S. official said the decision would push the Pentagon to follow suit with the U.S. State Department and U.S. Agency for International Development, which already have American contractors in Ukraine. The official added that no U.S. troops would be needed to protect contractors in Ukraine, and that issues such as security and risk mitigation would be the responsibility of the companies that contract with the Pentagon. Some U.S. defense contractors have gone to Ukraine in small numbers in the past, servicing weapons not supplied by the Pentagon, the official said. Given that there is already a wide range of American companies that have personnel in Ukraine fulfilling contracts for the Ukrainian government, there will not be a significant increase in the number of American employees working on the ground, the first official said. Despite the sanctions, Russia used Western manufactured components to produce its S-70 Okotnik drone that was struck over Donetsk region in early October, main directorate of Ukraine's intelligence stated on Friday. In a statement posted on its official Telegram channel, the main directorate revealed that in particular, microelectronics and other technological components manufactured by U.S., German and Swiss companies were found in the Russian drone that was downed over the city of Konstantinovka in eastern Donetsk region on October 5. The agency made the statement after thoroughly examining the S-70 Okotnik, known as Hunter drone, that was downed near Konstantinovka. Russia had four items of S-70 drones, which costs about $15 million each, the main directorate of intelligence said. The drones have been used during attacks on civilian infrastructure in Ukraine. The drone is classified as an attack and reconnaissance drone. The downing of S-70 drone is a major loss for the Russian Air Force, which has already lost more than 100 combat aircraft, including the Su-57 fighter jet, during nearly three years of the war in Ukraine. Hunter drone performed its maiden flight in 2019 and its first footage was recorded at an airfield in Novosibirsk. Chinese military is studying the characteristics of HIMARS weapons used in Ukraine. Among them are drones and which they could potentially encounter in a war for Taiwan. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine is gradually escalating into World War III, which Moscow's allies, China, Iran and the DPRK, could take advantage of. This is happening in particular because of Kiev's weak support from Western countries. This was stated by foreign affairs media outlet. According to experts, Western support for Ukraine has stalled since the start of the war. Their greatest fear is an escalation of the conflict, which is why they are limiting the use of their weapons in Russia. The situation has led to countries outside Europe turning to Russian President Vladimir Putin with diplomatic schemes to end the war, experts say. However, it will be difficult for them to take a neutral position, making Ukraine unlikely to agree to talk. 
foreign affairs, stressed that the war in Europe is gradually turning into World War III due to its gradual increase in scale. This could be exploited by China, Iran and North Korea, for whom participation in the war in Ukraine could help prepare for wars they may wage in the future. Experts shared that there is a rumor that the Chinese military is studying the characteristics of the weapons used in Ukraine. Among them are drones and HIMARS, which they could potentially encounter in a war for Taiwan. Iran also received Western technology captured from Ukraine, including anti-tank and anti-aircraft missiles, which it could study for its own production, experts said. North Korea could gain combat experience for its soldiers. Foreign Affairs recalled that Europe has been waging wars beyond its continental borders for a long time. Now, Western countries have decided not to intervene in the conflict directly without sending their soldiers to Ukraine, which is a signal to Russia and its allies. However, non-European involvement in the war would not necessarily lead to Ukraine's defeat, the experts added. Foreign Affairs said support from Iran, China and North Korea could come at a high cost to Russia and suggested that Moscow would have to make some concessions to strengthen its relations with these countries. Russian dictator Vladimir Putin has destroyed the country's medical sector in his 20 years in power. The situation is catastrophic. This topic was unexpectedly raised on the air of the pro-government radio station Komsomolskaya Pravda. Propagandists discussed the mass layoffs of medical workers, especially ambulance workers in Russia. People do not want to work because of low salaries and very heavy workloads. Ambulances are scattered all over the country, especially in small towns. The lion's share of our teams can only be called teams conditionally. Instead of two doctors, one doctor often leaves there and he cannot perform resuscitation as required. This is a completely different risk for patients. Our number of teams is 1.5 to 2 times lower than the standard. In rural areas, we do not have medical teams, not to mention resuscitation, psychiatric, obstetric teams. We have never heard of this. The shortage of personnel is huge. Paramedic teams in rural areas work alone. There are no doctors. There are one to two teams for several districts. The route is 200 kilometers or even more. You can wait seven to eight hours and this is not an ambulance at all. The Russian propagandist complained. He also specified that despite the disaster, the new Russian budget did not include funds to increase the salaries of medical workers. Apparently, Putin prefers spending money on killing Ukrainians and destroying a neighboring country rather than improving the lives of Russians. Recall Putin is crowned again for another six years. Legally, he can remain in office until 2036, when he will turn 84. By then, Russia may be even larger, but with fewer people as population decline continues, advanced by wars and with resources depleted as oil and gas supplies dwindle. In such a scenario, Russia will continue to be ruled by a physically declining tyrant, still feared by his timid associates. They have seen what happens to those who cross his path. But Vladimir Putin is not immortal and, in that sense, his time in history is little more than a tick of a clock.